Hi everybody, Mr. Allaire here again with part two of our special two-part podcast series involving biology dissections. In this particular podcast, part two, we're going to be talking about the various dissection tools and equipment that you'll be using when doing dissections in the biology classroom. Uh, so why are we spending some time talking about this? Why can't we just jump in and start using things? Well, you might remember at the beginning of the year when we talked about lab safety, I told you my first three rules of lab are safety, safety, safety. And part of that is knowing what the equipment is that you'll be using. If we know what it is, if we're at least a little bit familiar with it, we are just that much safer, not only to ourselves, but to the other people around us that we'll be working with while doing biology dissections. And this goes not just for biology dissections, but also for physics labs, chemistry labs, human anatomy and physiology, whatever science or activity you go into, uh, knowing the equipment is a really big help, again, not only to yourself, but to other people around you. So when you are going to do dissections, you are going to be working with a dissection kit that looks a lot like the picture uh, on this particular podcast. In fact, I have one right here. This is the kind of kit that you guys will be getting. And inside of the kit are a bunch of different tools that you are probably a little bit familiar with, but you may not know exactly what they're used for. So that's the point of this podcast. And let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of these pieces of equipment. Starting with something that isn't actually found in your kit, this is the dissecting pan. Dissecting pan. So this is a pan that we will be using to put especially large uh, specimens in. Again, um, I typically like to have my students do three dissections during the year, a worm, a frog, and a fetal pig. And all three of those dissections will be going into this particular dissecting pan. If you remember from our safety rules, we never do dissections while holding the specimen in our hands. That is very, very unsafe. So we always secure our specimens to the dissecting pan before we start doing any kind of cutting or dissecting at all. Now, when we open up our dissection kit, we're going to find a few things. One of them are these dissecting pins. I have a few of them right here. You should have about four or five of these pins in your dissecting kit. Uh, these are sometimes known as T-pins because they do kind of look like T's. And these are really for just holding down your specimen. Um, you know, not only just holding them down, but as we cut into the specimen and we fold back um, the, uh, the chest cavity, we will want to hold down flaps of skin, flaps of flesh and muscle, uh, and that's where these pins really come in handy. We want to keep our fingers away from where the dissecting is happening, and these pins really do help to keep your fingers away from those areas. Now, we are not only going to be cutting skin as well as muscle, occasionally we will be cutting things like sinew, cartilage, and yes, sometimes bone. So we do have inside of our kit a pair of dissecting scissors, and these are what we'll be using to cut the tougher things inside of our specimens. As I mentioned in the uh, safety podcast, if you are using your scalpel and you are really having to work at cutting something and you're starting to look like you're sitting at Outback Steakhouse cutting into a steak, you're doing something wrong. You're cutting something that shouldn't be cut with the scalpel. That's when you should be using your scissors. So if you ever find yourself really struggling, take a step back, take a breath. You're probably cutting something that you shouldn't be cutting with the scalpel. This is a time to get out those scissors. Speaking of scalpel, let's talk about it a little bit. This is probably one of the main tools that you will be using in your dissecting kit. All of the dissecting kits come with them, and we will be using scalpels with disposable blades. So if you ever find that your scalpel is getting a little bit dull and you need to have your blade replaced, we can pop out the blade, pop in a new one. Scalpels are very, very sharp. They are for precise cutting. It is not a knife that you would use to cut a steak or a piece of chicken that you might get out uh, at, at dinner with your parents. They are for very precise cutting. They are very, very sharp, and we'll be using them not only for cutting skin, but also muscle. Now, something important to remember is that if they are really good for cutting the skin and the muscle of our dissecting specimens, that means that they are also really good at cutting the skin and the muscle of you. So we do need to be very, very careful when handling our scalpels as well as the other sharp and pointy instruments that we will be using for dissections.
Speaking of which, one of the other common tools that we'll be using is a dissecting needle. We don't really want to use our fingers when we're doing dissections, even though there will be times where I will ask you to touch something to get a sense of what the texture uh, is like for a particular organ or for a particular body part. But generally, when we're lifting and probing the internal organs, moving things aside so we can see organs that are less superficial and more deep down in our organisms, we're gonna be using both the dissecting needle, which looks like the images that you have there and which I have right here, but we may also be using what's called a blunt probe, which is this one right here. Uh, and rather than it being sharp and pointy, like the needle that I have in my left hand, uh, the blunt probe is exactly as it sounds. It is a bent probe that is blunt on the end, and it's less about poking something and more about moving something to the side. Another instrument that we will be using quite a bit are forceps. Now, I know they look a lot like tweezers, but they're not tweezers. They're forceps. What's the difference? I have no idea, and I probably couldn't tell you. Somebody that's more educated than me would probably be able to give you a really great answer, but for all intents and purposes, forceps are a lot like tweezers, except that we call them forceps. So that's going to do it for the tools that we use. Um, our dissections are going to be relatively basic, so we're not going to be using any kind of really uh, strange equipment. No saws, no uh, big gigantic cleavers or knives that you might see on television when somebody's doing an autopsy. And that's because, again, we are going to be doing some relatively simple critters. So uh, those are the dissection tools that we'll be using when we do dissections, and I hope you found this helpful.